Liz DeCanton, it is time for our Raiders report brought to you by Credit One. Raiders head coach Tom Flores has spent the last four decades quietly wondering if this day would ever come. The day of recognition that his greatness would forever be entrenched in the halls of Canton. A bronze bust signifying what every Raider fan already knew, but now has the opportunity to be forever remembered with his fellow NFL elite. The wait, it's officially over. Tom Flores is going to Canton. It's all about legacy, you know? <laughs> Certainly is. Oh, I see, we probably go down there and then in there. I think Tom is so laid back, though, I don't think we're gonna be able to make him cry. I heard the big bang in the door, and it's, and it's just a little bar. Doesn't that doorbell work? I thought, who the devil is that? You know, nobody comes on Sunday unless we invite him for dinner. Yes, oh, hi. Hi. Oh, can you bring Coach on out with I you? I sure will. I'll be right back. I thought, something's happening. I was kind of afraid to even think about it because the last time we saw David, he, he, he came to the door and said Tom didn't make it. Can you come to the front door, please? That's great. She said it's some people that want to see it. I thought maybe they were delivering some beer or something because that's, I'm waiting for a shipment of my beer with my picture on the can. Coach, come on out here for a second, would you? When I looked at the door and this big person took up a whole door, and I said, oh my God, then I realized uh, this could be it. Coach, I got something to say to you, okay? Yeah. On behalf of all of us who love this game, on behalf of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I want to thank you so much for all you've done for the game. And I want to welcome you to Canton, Ohio, as a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I promise you, Coach, that we are going to guard your legacy forever. Thank you. The guy who has my job 100 day bakers from now will be telling the story not only of the great player and coach that you are, but also of the man that you are. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is big. <laughs> yeah. you lost it. I'm using that lost for words. But... <laughs> but coach, you've meant so much to the game, and there's so many people who love you and look up to you, and I know this has been a long, long journey. <laughs> He's just really touched and really excited about this. When you think about it, you know, he started out in 1960, and that's a long time ago. And then to have this be the culmination of all those years of football is like the icing on the cake and the cherry on top. <laughs> you don't even think about these things as you're growing up. Whoever thought there was the Hall of Fame? What was the Hall of Fame when I was a kid? Vineyards in Sanger, California. And here I am uh, going in with my friends and peers, my relatives, yeah. my family, my Raider family, and my Raider Nation family. I think the Raider Nation has been marvelous. Uh, the Raider family, equally marvelous and supportive. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have gotten this far. My life is complete now. I'm not ready to kind of check out yet, but my life is complete. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'll tell Mark. you what, Coach. Uh, this isn't the end of your football journey. No, this no. is the start of a whole new journey. Yeah. And I think you're going to look awfully good in gold. Thank you. You know, as much as we're going to silver and black. I think black. we're going to change the color of the Silver and black. <laughs> it's I'm getting a, silver. I'm a little silver and black head right there. Uh, Raider Nation, just be proud that we've made it. And I emphasize, we've made it. Just be proud. And I'm proud to be your representative. Head coach Tom Flores is headed to Canton. We have a very special show for you folks at home today. We're talking all about the Raiders legend as the Iceman himself is joining us to discuss his impact on the silver and black. And of course, later, we're going to bring in his two-time winning Super Bowl quarterback and good friend, Jim Plunkett, will be joining us. And of course, stick around to the end of the show because we have a very special guest to talk all about Flores' legacy. We've got all that and so much more right here on the Raiders Report. This has been brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Raiders. Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill.
Hey Coach Flores, this is Ron Rivera. Just want to say congratulations on your nomination and election into the NFL Hall of Fame. It's well deserved. It's a long time coming, but well deserved. And I want to thank you for being an inspiration, an inspiration to me and to all those that are like me. Okay? Coaches, coaches of Latino heritage, we really do appreciate who you are, Coach. And it really is, is, is I think it's awesome. And I really do appreciate what you've meant to me throughout my career. Again, thanks for being a role model. Thank you for being a mentor. Thank you for being who you are. Thanks, Coach, and again, congratulations. Well, it has taken 22 years since Tom Flores was first eligible to enter the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And all I can say is good things come to those who wait. Let's welcome in the groundbreaking head coach, the Iceman himself, Mr. Tom Flores. Tom, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for allowing me in this magnificent building. This facility is uh, mind-boggling. It's, it's beautiful. Oh. It's a nice facility. Compared to what uh, I was there, I can say I was there from day one. I was there from day one when we were in Santa Cruz, California. And, and uh, most of the players in that room, the first meeting, didn't even know where Oakland was. <laughs> Yet we were playing for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, but we were playing in San Francisco at the time, so it was kind of crazy, but that was a long time ago. There's a lot to get into, and I feel so grateful to be a part of this of this story, of this show. There's a lot for you folks at home that we're going to talk about with Mr. Flores. But I do want to go a little bit back in time because, you know, you grew up in a farming family that mm. didn't really have football in, in your life when you were young. And you really, you started when you were a junior high school. Uh, what is it for you about football, Coach, that you just love so much? I don't know. It's hard to say because when I, the very first time I ever picked up a football, uh, I was uh, in the fifth grade uh, at my, in my hometown of Sager, California, in Wilson School, and I saw this funny-looking ball with pointed ends, and it was kind of half flat. Kind of like the Tom Brady rule, rule was kind of soft, <laughs> and it was much easier to throw. But I picked it up and started playing catch with it. I said, what is this? And somebody said, it's a football. I said, well, what do you do with it? <laughs> and uh, the only thing, thing that we knew at that time was softball. We played, had to organize softball in, in uh, elementary school. So we just played on playgrounds, and I learned how to play. The, that's the way other guys, it, it was more of a keep away than anything else. Mm until I got to high school and started playing organized tackle. And I found out that I could always throw the ball. And I found out that I really liked the competition mm -hmm. involved. And I found out that I was pretty good, good enough to continue on and uh, eventually get a scholarship to college. Okay, and so here we are today, 22 years of eligibility and you finally get a little knock huh. on a door by Mark and David Baker. Take us through what that moment was like for you. So I'd received some calls that I was one of the finalists and this and that. And then I'm in my house in Palm Springs, Indian Wells, and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door and there's David Baker in Palm Springs. I said, what is he doing? And then all of a sudden I realized I made it. I really, really made it. It was really a special moment uh, that required tears of joy. And uh, we got it all on tape and, and I said, I made it. And now, of course, you're part of an incredible group of coaches, Bill Wash, Vince Lombardi, Don Shula, who you're six and one against, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it feel like to be in such esteemed, elite company? Feels pretty good. Yeah. When you start naming the names, and the players and, and the coaches, it really sounds pretty good. It just gives you a great feeling all, all around. And so everything that I've done, I've always tried to do it with class, dignity, but I try to do it my way, which is kind of a quiet way. I don't, I don't blow a lot of horns. I just uh, do my job and uh, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. Obviously you came after a guy who was in many ways kind of the opposite, you know, boisterous, John Madden, known for being quite vocal on the sidelines. For, for you, Coach, did you ever feel any pressure t when you were following the footsteps of, of John Madden? No, I didn't. I never felt, uh, no, the only pressure I felt was that uh, I needed to win. Mm -hmm. I told uh, Mr. Davis, Al Davis, when, when he hired me, he said, I'm not John. I said, you know how I am. And he said, I know what you are. He said, and the only thing you have to do is win. His 
coined the phrase, just win, baby. <laughs> that was it. That would be enough proof for Al. And he said, you do what you have to do to win. If Al was here today, what would you, what would you say to him? Thank you. Mm. There's nothing else to say. Thank you. Yeah. And I get tears of eyes. For you, for you, Coach, what did being a Raider mean to you? It meant that, uh, that somewhere along the line, I did something good. Mm. I did something right, and I must have done it pretty good. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, it's, it's time for my rewards. Mm -hmm. It's time for my uh, uh, raising the glasses. And uh, yeah. I'm very proud of that, very proud. It's time to celebrate you. Time for, to celebrate you. Yeah. For what you've what, what you've done for yeah. for NFL for the pro football history, and um, I think Al uh, took took a great chance because um, he never really looked at race or gender. He looked at who was the right person for the job, and of course that person was Tom Flores, who led the Raiders to a pair of Super Bowl titles in the 1980-1983 season and went on to be one of the greatest football coaches of all time. We still have a lot more to talk about when it comes to Tom Flores. And coming up, you tutored several incredible players as a coach. One of those guys you won two Super Bowls with. That is right. We've got Jim Plunkett stopping by. He has got a lot to say about his head coach. Stick around. We'll be right back. This segment has been brought to you by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. Play fake. Back is Plunkett. Time to throw. Deep to the end zone to Branch. It is caught by Branch. Touchdown, Raiders. He won a wrestling match against Whitehill Young. After guiding the team to a 9-7 record in 1979, Coach Flores weathered the storm of losing starting quarterback Dan Pastorini to a broken leg in Week 5 of the 1980 season. In steps former Heisman Trophy winner Jim Plunkett at the helm. The team goes on to earn an 11-5 record and a wild card playoff berth, becoming the first wild card team to win a Super Bowl. And the rest, well, you could say, is history. Here to talk about his experience winning not one, but two Super Bowls with, of course, Coach Flores, his quarterback himself, Jim Plunkett. Jim, thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. Good to have you. Well, you know, I mean, the first thing I have to ask you is, what was it like for you when you found out your coach is going to the Hall of Fame? I was very happy for him, uh, well-deserved. Uh, all the things he's accomplished uh, in the NFL, being a quarterback, being an assistant coach, being a head coach uh, of two Super Bowls, and just being able to play for him was uh, mm -hmm. a, a real thrill for me and very exciting time. For you, Jim, you know, when you think of, of coach and good friend, of course, uh, what, what was it about him? Because his former players all talk about the ability to trust in his team. Um, what, what do you believe made him such an effective leader and coach? Well, I, I think preparation. Uh, he mentioned it himself uh, early on that uh, you know he got us ready to play each and every game, uh, designing an attack offensively that was going to be hopefully be effective against whoever we were playing. And I thought that was a little bit different than some of the coaches I'd had in the past. I mean, he was very uh, sure about how he wanted to attack teams. He wanted to put the ball down the field, which, you know, I felt I was very good at, excelled at. Uh, and I got my opportunities with the Raiders and, and the type of offense they ran. And that's what I was pretty good at, putting the ball down the football field. But I feel like with, a, with a, a, an effective team, the QB and the coach really have to be kind of on the same page. Um, and he obviously trusted you. You know, what was that like in the in the locker room when you guys uh, had a you know challenging opponent coming up and kind of working together, having to have that ability to trust one another? Well, one of the things that helped me was that he said, you know, when he sent in a play, mm -hmm. and I changed it to have a good reason of why I was changing, mm -hmm. not not to just change it because I felt like it, but if if he, I saw something different than he saw. 
in the play that he's standing in, then you know you go go ahead and change the play, have the confidence in in, in your own ability to to make that judgment, and that's that's pretty much a, a trust going on there. Is that how you felt that if he yeah. called a play, you kind of let him steer the ship? Well, we we you know we looked at the same film and uh, point out the same things, and uh, we had uh, several meetings, just uh, the quarterbacks and and, and myself and and, uh, and uh, our offensive coaches. And I always told uh, Jim, I said, if you have a play that you think is better, then use it. And if you have a play that you feel is good, then you just give yourself the call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, and go with it. And then <laughs> with, a, with a little smile, I said, but it better work. <laughs> <laughs> and we would both have a little chuckle on that, but that's the way I felt. I mean, he knew the game plan, I knew the game plan. And I played quarterback, so I know what it's like to be in the in the huddle. I know what it's like when you when you feel you're setting up. And in fact, I set a play in once he didn't use it, and he came back out of the game, and uh, we had to punt the ball. And I said, "What happened?" He said, "We weren't ready for it." Okay, I accept that. I accept because he's he has the tempo, and uh, you know, that's that's the way. So we had a good relationship in that in that respect. Well, I feel like the next question I need to ask you, Coach, is uh, now that you're a Hall of Famer, maybe you have some pull because the guy sitting next to you is yeah. definitely deserving of that same recognition. Well, as soon as I'm in position to do so, trust me, <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Jim Plunkett. Absolutely, the man, of course, winning two Super Bowls and one of the best comeback stories in NFL history. Uh, we have plenty more coming up on the show. In fact, we have a very, very, very special guest. This coach has coached 11 players who were elected to the Hall of Fame. One of those players is joining us next. We have a very, very special guest for you, Coach Flores. You do not want to miss this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Brought to you by Twitch. Watch. Discover. Join in. Coach Flores, this is Marcus. Congratulations, Hall of Fame. It has such a great ring to it. Uh, you certainly deserve it. And uh, you know, you will go down as one of the greatest coaches in the history of the National Football League. And I love hearing that because you know what? You were and you are. And uh, I'm proud of you. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that love you and uh, are certainly excited for you, but I'm none more prouder than I am. Congratulations, Coach. This is such a great, 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 great day. Uh, Hall of Fame, finally. Oh my God, this is, this is incredible. I get chills just thinking about it. I miss you and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. And congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Si se puede. All right, welcome back to Raiders Report. Coach Flores going to Canton. Aaron Coscarelli alongside Coach Flores and his two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback, Jim Plunkett. As we take a look back, as Coach Flores has gone on to coach some of the greatest players in pro football history, one of his former players, a man who needs absolutely no introduction, Hall of Fame defensive end Howie Long joins the show. Howie, thank you so much. How you doing? How you guys doing? Hey. hey, Coach. Hey, Jim. Hey, how are you? Congrats. I want to take a minute to congratulate you. It's obviously long overdue, and mm. the guy sitting right next to you there in the second camera shot, uh, it, hopefully he's not far behind. Mm. Uh, both of you guys deserve to be in the hall and couldn't be happier for you. Thrilled to death. Well, Howie, thank you so much for joining us. We know how much uh, Coach Flores means to you in your respective career, as well as Jim Plunkett. And, you know, I asked Jim earlier, I'm curious, what was your reaction when Coach finally got the call? Well, aside from about time, I mean, you know, I mean, any, anyone with the Raiders who had a voice was preaching and chirping both on air and, and off air to people who are part of the decision-making process and thrilled to death. When you look at coach's career and both as a player, an assistant coach and a head coach, and I, I always looked at that locker room and said, what an extraordinary challenge that locker room was. 
the guy that goes up in the front of the room has to have the respect of the room. And that was quite a room, both for that 1980 team and an 83, of course. And he did it with class. And, and when he spoke up, it, it, you know, people, people really stood at attention and got the message. And, you know, I just want to say it was a long road to get where he is right now. And it's, he's going to enjoy this so much. And I'm so looking forward to watching him get enshrined. But throughout the years, while he was waiting, he handled it the same way he's handled everything else in his life with class and dignity. I think that that epitomizes who, who Coach is. Wow, that's pretty special. Well, yeah. Can I say something? Absolutely. I had to, uh, I treated Howie uh, with respect and dignity. I had him his whole career. That's pretty unique yeah. nowadays. Uh, he was a young, young uh, rookie, and I promised a lady once that I would take care of him. We called her Ma. Mm. And uh, I did. That's right, Ma. Ma, he, you know, they, he really did. In many ways, I was, I was still a kid. And, you know, you walk in a locker room with Jim and <clears throat> Cliff Branch, Art Shell, Gene Upshaw, and, uh, you know, guys are smoking Salem lights and playing cards. You know, it's like <laughs> it's a different environment from Villanova. Uh, you know, as I'm sure for Jim, you know, coming from Stanford, New England, and then you get into that Raider locker room and it's just a different it's, I think, you know, in watching that 30 for 30 the other night, I don't know how these two guys felt, but it, it just solidified why it's the most unique organization in football. You make a, a great point, how, how we being able to manage, and, and in many ways with that trust, quietly, uh, as you talk about how you're a leader through sort of uh, your quiet effectiveness, Jim, I want to bring you in here, too, and, and have that conversation with Howie. What, what was that synergy like? Because you, you have Hall of Famers on both sides of the ball, such incredible talent on the offense, on the defense. You know, what, what were the practices like with, with what you guys were going through in the, in the early 80s, in, in 83, 80, 81, 82? What, what was that like, Jim? Well, the practice, I, you know, they're all competitive. You're all trying to get better, all trying to prepare for the upcoming game uh, and making sure you've got – you know, as a quarterback, every play in your head, ready to go in each and every situation. Uh, and in those years when Howie got there, all of a sudden our defense became that much stronger. Uh, it helped offensively. You know, they got us the ball in great uh, situations and made our job a little bit easier. And then we were also very dynamic with Marcus Allen and Cliff Branch. And, Offensive, we can put points on the board. But it's a very exciting time for me and, and the Raiders. And, you know, a lot of Raiders still deserving of that gold jacket, none more than the man sitting here on the set next to Coach. Amen. Uh, how do we, we need to keep this Raider train uh, rolling in many respects, even the late, of course, the late Cliff Branch. You can't forget about him, Howie, right? Not at all. And, and you know, you look at, you look at Jim's numbers and, the arc of Jim's career and what he went through in New England and then with San Francisco and, and coming coming to the Raiders and just the way Jim played in big games. It's guys like Jim or Rod Martin who who just played big in big games. And and Jim really, I think, in, in those moments solidified the kind of player he is. So I, I just think it's a, to me, it's a no brainer and we'll continue to, you know, howl at the moon and uh, try to try to make sure that Jim deservedly gets into the Hall of Fame and, and Cliff also. Wow. Well, many more Raiders will be entrenched in the halls of Canton. And Howie, thank you so much for sharing your stories and uh, letting us know how much Coach Flores has meant to you and Gentlemen, thank you for this. This has been an honor for me, Jim Plunkett, Coach Flores. It's, it's been an honor for me to host this very, very special show with you guys at home. Congratulations, Coach, on your selection. And a big thanks to everyone who was able to join us today as, of course, we celebrate a very special man getting the recognition he deserves. Brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in by your Southern Nevada Ford dealers. Ford, official vehicle of Raider Nation.